In the previous sessions, we looked at situations um, where we had normal or abnormal losses and gains from our process, and we assumed that in any given period, at the end of the period, we had completed all of the work on our units. Now, in reality, it is likely for a company that at the end of a given period, there will be a certain number of units which we have begun work on, but have not yet finished all the work in those units. So they are partially completed. This is what we would call our closing work in progress. Units we have begun work on, but have not yet finished. In this next section, we are going to look at how we deal with closing work in progress, and then, of course, opening work in progress. Now, to understand the problem we have when we have opening and closing work in progress, we're going to look at the following situation. So let's say, for example, for a company, the unit's input during the period were a thousand. And the total cost for the period were 2,250. At the end of the period, they have the following situation. So there are 500 units fully complete. And 500 units, which are only 50% complete. So the 500 units, 50% complete, this is our closing work in progress. We have begun the work on these units, but they are not going to be finished off and sent to finished goods until the next period. So the question we have in this situation is how do we value each of these components? How do we work out how much we have spent on the 500 fully completed units? and how much we have spent on our closing work in progress, or the partially completed units. Now, in previous exercises, we just spread the costs evenly across our units of output. So if we were to divide our total costs of 2,250 evenly, then we will value each of these components at £1,125 each, so just splitting the costs in two. But does this make sense? Does it make sense to put the same value on 500 fully completed units as 500 partially completed units? It seems logical that as a company we have spent more money fully completing the 500 units than we have spent doing part of the work on our closing work in progress. In every question we see which involves opening and closing work in progress, we are going to follow three steps in order to, to divide these costs fairly across our two components. So now we're going to look at these steps and apply them to this exercise. In the first step, we calculate what is called a statement of equivalent units. In this step, what we are doing is looking at each of our components, so our output to finished goods and our closing work in progress, and calculating the equivalent work done on those units. And all we look at here is the number of physical units in that component and the percentage completion of those units. So let's see how this is done. In our statement of equivalent units then, we look at each of our components. The physical units. And the equivalent units. So the two components we are trying to value in this exercise are our outputs to finished goods and our closing work in progress.
So we'll start with the first one. Our output to finished goods. We said that there were 500 physical units in our output to finished goods. Now we want to calculate the number of equivalent units. The equivalent units are just the physical units multiplied by the percentage completion. So what percentage completion is our output to finished goods? Well, if we have sent those units over to finished goods, then by definition, they are fully completed. We must have done all the work on those units, or else they wouldn't be finished goods. So our percentage completion is 100%, which means our equivalent units are 500. Looking at our next component, which is our closing work in progress, we just want to do the same thing. So our closing work in progress also has 500 physical units. But our closing work in progress is only partially completed. We said that our closing work in progress is 50% complete. So we just multiply our physical units by our percentage completion to get the number of equivalent units. So 500 by 50% is 250. What we are saying here is that doing 50% of the work on 500 units is the equivalent to doing all of the work on 250 units in terms of cost to the company. So then we just sum the two to calculate our total equivalent units. And the work done in the period then on our fully completed units and our partially completed units is 750 equivalent units. So that's our step one complete. We have done our statement of equivalent units for the period. Our next step then is to calculate the cost per equivalent unit. And this is what we will use to value each of our two components. So calculating the cost per equivalent unit, all we do is divide the total costs by the total equivalent units. So in this exercise, our cost per equivalent unit is equal to our total costs of 2,250 divided by our 750 equivalent units. And if you quickly divide that through, we get three pounds. So each equivalent unit work done in the period has cost the company three pounds. Then we get to our final step. Step three is our statement of valuation. All we do in this step is look at each of the components in our statement of equivalent units and place a value on those components. And the value of each is going to be the number of equivalent units multiplied by the cost per equivalent unit. So, we said our two components were our output to finished goods and our closing work in progress. Let's put a value on each of those two things. So first our output to finished goods. The number of equivalent units in our output to finished goods was 500. If we multiply that by our cost per equivalent unit of 3, 
then the total value to the company of our output to finished goods is 1,500. And finally then, looking at our closing work in progress, we said there was 250 equivalent units multiplied by 3 gives us 750. Now if we just add these two valuations back together, we see we get back to the 2,250, which were our total costs for the period in our original example. So notice that our costs haven't changed. All we have done by following these three steps is divide those costs evenly across each of our output components. And we have taken into account the fact that our closing work in progress is not yet complete. Now we're going to have a look at another exercise and we are going to apply these steps again. And as I've mentioned, every time we do an exercise in this section, we are going to be applying these three steps. So if we have a look at our next exercise then, we are told in a given period we have 5,000 units direct materials with a cost of 16,560. Then we have our direct labour and our production overhead costs, giving us total period costs of 29,440. Then we are told of the 5,000 units we input during the period, 4,000 of them have been fully completed meaning we have sent them over to finished goods. And the remaining 1,000 units are only 60% complete by the end of the period. And once again, what we are being asked to do is find the value of the finished units and find the value of our closing work in progress. So if we follow our three steps again, this should be quite straightforward. So, looking at our first step then, which we said was our statement of equivalent units. We want to look at each component, check the number of physical units, and then cal calculate the equivalent units based on the percentage completion. Well, okay. The first component we have is our output to finished goods, which was 4,000 physical units. And what is the percentage completion of our output to finished goods? Well, as we said before, by definition, if they are finished, then we have done 100% of the work on these units. So our equivalent units will be 4,000 multiplied by 100%, giving us 4,000. And our second component then, of course, is our closing work in progress, which was the remaining 1,000 physical units. These 1,000 units are only 60% complete. So the equivalent units will be 1,000 by 60%, so 600 equivalent units, giving us a total equivalent units of 4,600. And that's step one, complete. So moving on to step two then, where we need to calculate the cost per equivalent unit. Remember, we do this by dividing the total cost for the period by the number of equivalent units. If we look back at our exercise quickly, we can see that the total cost for the period were 29,440. And we have just worked out 
that the number of equivalent units are 4,600. So, our cost per equivalent unit then, our total costs of 29,440 divided by our equivalent units. And if you put that into your calculators, you should get 6 pounds 40 per equivalent unit. And that is our step two complete. Then finally, we're going to use this information to put a value on each of our components. So step three will be our statement of valuations. If we look back at our statement of equivalent units, we have our output to finished goods of 4,000 equivalent units and our closing work in progress, which is 600. So the valuation of each of these components will be the number of equivalent units multiplied by the cost per equivalent unit. So the value of our output to finished goods will be 4,000 multiplied by 6.4. So the total value of our output to finished goods is 25,600. And finally then, our closing work in progress is 600 equivalent units multiplied by our cost per equivalent unit, you should get 3,840. And so we have completed our three steps. We'll just jump back into our exercise. So we now have the answers to our two questions, the value of our finished units, and the value of our closing work in progress. And once again, all we have done is divide um, the total cost for the period across each of these components, taking into account the partial completion of our closing work in progress.